Hello, so in this video we will be talking about how you shouldn't say something is a hoax or that there's a conspiracy without there being evidence to argue your point. In this case I will be talking about how people specifically talk about climate change being false like they just uncovered the biggest hoax the world has ever seen. I mean it has been since about the mid 18 hundreds that people have figured out that changes in the gases in the atmosphere can cause climate change and it's been since 1896 since the greenhouse effect was proven to be a thing so if i do the math right 2016 minus 1896 that's 120 years of making up lies without any whistleblowers fucking amazing but nevertheless we have people who have no scientific background talking about it like they've been studying it for their whole lives, even though they're just bloggers. In this video, I will simply talk about how this one study that hit the news about three years ago, because the New York Times and Washington Post wrote about it, and then there were these brave souls that thoroughly proved the paper was a lie. We're going to break down how these climate skeptics, aka modern day superheroes, do things and debunk the climate change myth. Here we go. For this analysis, we are going to look at just one study to keep things sim simple, like I just said. The paper we will be looking at is this paper by Sean A. Marcotte and his colleagues, titled A Reconstruction of Regional and Global Temperature for the Past 11,300 Years. Now, at the start of this paper, there's a summary of the paper called an abstract. If you're unfamiliar with scientific writing, this is basically just the summary of the paper. So what it says is that surface temperature reconstructions of the past 1500 years suggest that recent warming is unprecedented in that time. Here we provide a broader perspective by reconstructing regional and global temperature anomalies for the past 11,300 years from 73 globally distributed records. Early Holocene 10,000 to 5,000 years ago, warmth is followed by about 0.7 degrees cooling through the middle to late Holocene less than 5,000 years ago, culminating in the coolest temperatures of the Holocene during the Little Ice Age about 200 years ago. This cooling is largely associated with 2 degrees Celsius change in the North Atlantic. Current global temperatures of the past decade have not exceeded peak interglacial values, but are warmer than during 75% of the Holocene temperature history. Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, Model projections for 2100 exceed the full distribution of Holocene temperature under all plausible greenhouse gas emission scenarios. Now, first off, that's a mouthful. But unlike what's in Tory Black's mouth at the end of a scene, this is an important mouthful. It doesn't state that global warming is true or false. Writing such as that is unscientific because things aren't that simple. Not to mention that global warming involves many different things, such as stronger hurricanes, increased salination, uh, coastal erosion, and acidification of the world's oceans, just to name a few. Basically, it would take many studies to refute all the effects of global warming. What it does say is that temperatures change from cool periods and warm periods. Probably the scariest part is that the temperatures during the last decade, 2000 to 2009, have been 75% higher than the previous 11,290 years prior to the study being done in 2013. Also, it states that the IPCC have projected that by 2100, the full distribution of temperatures will exceed the Holocene period. This is just the first paragraph of this study, and we've barely cut the surface of this one paper. Considering this is a scientific paper, one can't simply just pick and choose what to talk about, but people still do. They pick out what they understand, and the rest they just ignore. Not only that, but there are about 4,000 of these papers on recent global warming that argue that global warming is caused by humans. Probably even more than that, because that number just came out of just one study that counted studies. There was more than one study done to count the number of papers written on recent climate change, and even all those had to be peer peer-reviewed to make sure there were no errors. To put it simply, there are studies on studies on studies, some of which are just to analyze other studies to make sure those studies are correct. Okay, so 
enough of that, but it's important to realize that it's important to leave climate science to the experts. And when I mean experts, I mean people who have done the research, not just a random meteorologist or some uh, guy who was a weatherman or some historian. Uh, because somebody who isn't knowledgeable, like me or some journalist, is liable to possibly misinterpret the study just as so many people have done. It's important to remember that all of these studies are checked and rechecked all the time, which brings me to my next part. Stop pretending you know shit. Just in the study, I came across many things I didn't understand. Actually, most of it. Which is the reason I'm not going into further detail about the paper. First of all, not to bore you, but mostly because I don't understand much of the study. And you won't either. See, like reading stuff like interglacial periods, I had to look that shit up. And I already forgot what it was. I could guess, but I don't really know what the fuck a Monte Carlo-based randomization is. I just learned that proxy as pertaining to climate science means something different than when I use proxy. I don't even know what this means. And I don't think most people who watch this will understand this part. And I quote, We then assess the sensitivity of the temperature reconstruction to several averaging schemes, including an arithmetic mean of the data sets, a 30 degree by 30 degree area weighted mean, a 10 degree latitudinal weighted mean, and a calculation of 1,000 jackknife stacks that randomly exclude 50% of the records in each realization. Um, yeah, good luck with that. I had to do about two hours of external reading and looking up definitions just to get an idea of what the paper has to say. But then you get people forming conclusions contrary to what this paper suggests. <clears throat> it's just like someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, like Jenny McCarthy and vaccines. If you want to debunk this paper, just do it normally. All you have to do to dis disprove this study's findings is replicate the exact same study that Sean Marka did. And if you don't replicate his findings, then his findings aren't accurate. But the climate deniers didn't do this. In a nutshell, what they did was look at their charts. It doesn't make sense. I'm not kidding. That's basically, in a nutshell, what they did. Just to be clear, I'm not trying to diss these people at all. They have a reason why they're doing this. They're skeptical. That's normal. But when all you had to do was replicate their study to disprove them, it seems childish to point out their data and graphs and say you don't understand them, therefore it's bullshit. For example, this article by Stephen McIntyre, McIntyre on climateaudit.org says, the differences will be evident to readers in addition to the difference in closing uptick. Important reconstruction versions were at negative values in the closing portion of the thesis graphic, while they were at positive values in the closing portion of the science graphic. I wonder what accounts for the difference. I guess he's trying to point out that there were altered data or something that it was made up. Uh, but you can't really prove that. This guy literally has no idea what he is talking about. In the article with his last sentence there, I wonder what accounts for the difference. Later on, he goes on to zoom on on a couple of graphs directly from the study and saying, look right there where it goes down suspicious the fact is this study by marka explains in an exactly how they did everything then there are 41 pages of supplementary materials that go into extreme detail as to how they did everything from managing uncertainty with measurements to the construction of stacks which i guess are not the same stacks i would be talking about no idea what that is anyways not only that but they had an, an FAQ session to further explain everything. These climate scientists explained what they found and what they did in their paper, and then they had to explain everything else in the supplementary materials, and when they had to explain everything again in F, the FAQ session, and then elaborate even more in emails to people like me. This is some Buddha level of patience 
from these guys to patiently explain this stuff, which brings me to my next part. People focus on only one part of the paper. Without taking the whole paper into account, people just quoted what they could understand and fit their worldview and ran with it. For example, there is this quote at the middle of the paper. Standard 5x5 five five reconstruction exhibits 0.6 degree greater warming over the past 60 years uh, BP than our equivalent infilled 5x5 five five degree area weighted mean stack. However, considering the temporal resolution of our data set and the small number of records that cover this interval, this difference is probably not robust. The funny thing is, literally right after that quote, the authors of the paper go on to explain why it hasn't or wasn't robust. This is something the climate deniers skip over, mostly because it's something they don't understand, myself included. What proceeded to happen is that climate deniers jumped on this and said that this makes the whole study invalid because they said in the paper that it wasn't robust, therefore it's not statistic statistically significant man that's a word the funny thing is that in science statistically significant doesn't mean important in science or if you have taken a statistics course all that statistical significance proves is the probability that your findings aren't by chance that's it for example if you find statistical significance there's a small probability that your findings were by chance not only is statistical significance misinterpreted, but just because you find statistical significance doesn't mean it's true in all situations, which is why things such as effect size are calculated. There are even other ways to figure out statistical significance, which these guys use, which most people, including me, don't understand, which is why you should refer to the scientific literature and published studies for answers. If you find that your experiment is statistically significant, all that says is that the outcome was unlikely to occur by chance, but the study's main purpose was to see the changes in temperature over the last 11,300 years. To summarize, not robust doesn't equal not an important study. The findings in this paper do have value and are of importance. To summarize, look, first off, this paper doesn't disprove global warming. Secondly, one paper doesn't disprove the whole idea of global warming. Thirdly, is thirdly a thing? Regardless, this paper shows that even with warm and cool periods, the Earth's temperature remains pretty constant, and that recent temperature changes are more anomalous than previous temperature changes, and that by 2100, temperatures will be higher than the whole Holocene distribution. Closing thoughts. Finally, I'd like to close this video off with an analogy. This one time, I went to the doctor with what I was pretty sure was an abdominal muscle tear near my inguinal area, but then the doctor felt around in my lower abdominals and said I had a hernia and that I would need surgery. Oh no. I was stunned because it barely hurt. He then gave me some business cards of some general surgeons. Uh, and then he said that I should get an ultrasound to see how bad it was and to make sure he was correct. So uh, then I got the ultrasound, and after getting the ultrasound and revisiting my doctor, the doctor said that I didn't have a hernia, that it was what I said it was, an abdominal muscle strain, that all I needed to do was rest on it and it would heal normally, which is what I had thought originally. At the end of this, I could have bitched about it. I could have written my blog about how doctors don't know shit, that 10 years of education doesn't do anything, and that people should stop going to doctors. I could have told people to never go to a doctor again, because they are wrong a lot. And then all they do is lie to you. And tell you they know more just to get your money. But I didn't, because this man has dedicated his whole life to helping people and learning how to help people. Sometimes he gets things wrong. He's only human, and sometimes he says he doesn't know what the problem is right offhand. So he does tests to figure out what the problem is to better help you. Even if this guy was wrong, I still trust this guy with my health.
and my life because he knows more and has dedicated his life to the health of others. I haven't. Just like I trust doctors with my health, I trust the people who have been studying. I trust people who have been studying the health of the planet. And I will respect their findings because they have dedicated their lives to the health of the planet. People don't call doctors plumbers or chemist liars. But when it comes to climate scientists, they're a bunch of fucking liars trying to install a world government. And not only that, even when some chemists are proving uh, climate science to be true, they're deemed crazy. Even then, it's arbitrary and prejudicial. I mean, doctors might be trying to install a world government. Maybe they just make us take those MRIs just to steal our money. Just so they can fund the new world order to give it more power. Thinking like that is just useless and can't be proven because there's no evidence for it. Finally, I emailed Sean Marcotte asking if people had misinterpreted his study and he emailed me back. To paraphrase, he goes on to say that everyone should be a skeptic, that it's good. He also said that, says that I had it right that even though they can't statistically prove that current temperatures are warmer than most of the Holocene area, that they can say it leans towards the warmer end. And his response to the question I asked him... Are people misinterpreting your study? He said, It's hard for me to say what people want out of the paper. Our primary interest was reconstructing a clearer picture of the Holocene and doing something that others had not, which was compiling and presenting a global temperature reconstruction for the last 11,000 years or so. This followed on another paper where we did the same for the years 23,000 to 11,000 years ago, a time period known as the last deglaciation. Surprising, no one before us attempted this to our knowledge. We related the paper to the present climate to provide scientists and lay people with a better perspective about the current climate situation and stuck to what the data said, which was a mixed message. My guess is that folks can interpret the data either way. It shows today is not warmer than the Holocene maximum, or it shows we are very close to it. Regarding future and present climate change, for me it does not matter really what our single paper says, the body of research, physics, chemistry, geology, etc. tells us that when you put more CO2 into the atmosphere, it will eventually warm. The climate system is very complex, but all evidence, simple and complex, indicate more CO2 equates to a warmer planet. And that's just it. People can make what they want out of this paper because that's just how people work. But at the end of the day, the facts are facts and things are more complicated than people are able to understand. It's just not as simple as there's not a problem with global warming or that the earth will explode into a ball of fire if we don't address it now. It's more nuanced than that. But the facts are still there. That if you had more CO2 to the atmosphere... The planet will warm, pure and simple. Did I say had? I meant add. I've covered a lot in this video on just this one study, but if you're to take anything from this study in this video is that there are people more knowledgeable in the subject than you, and then you should refer to climate scientists for climate information, just like you would refer to your doctor for information about your health or to your mechanic about the health of your car. Be skeptical, but don't let skepticism turn into just straight-up denial in view of all the evidence, which is what a lot of people do. People search for yes or no answers is not productive when it comes to anything in life. There's so much complexity in the world for simply a yes or no. There's nuance to everything. Thanks for watching this video. And if you like content similar to this, please like and subscribe. I plan on analyzing many things from politics to art to anything that needs more analysis and thought put into it. Because I know things are more complex than simpler yes or no, Democrat or Republican, bad art or good art. And if you notice the same, I think you will like this channel. Also, if you want to learn more on climate change and other climate stuff... Uh, Check out Potholer54. He has some great stuff. All right. Peace.